Want to know how to start a health or fitness blog? I'm going to show you how in this video. Hey guys, it's Uriel Kame. Welcome to HPTV. This is the place where I'm showing you the health and fitness experts, how to turn your expertise into a thriving online business to create more impact, income, and freedom. Okay, so today we're talking about how to start a health or fitness blog. And specifically, I'm going to show you seven big mistakes you need to avoid. Okay, and I've seen this time and time again, and I want to help you avoid them so that you can have a little bit more of an easy path to growing your online platform. Now, I mean, why should you develop a blog in the first place for a website? Well, it's kind of like your storefront online. And if you don't have one, people can find you. But more importantly, if you have a website, who cares? Nobody cares about you. Nobody cares about me. All people care about is themselves and specifically about their problems. So if you can create content that's going to help solve their problems, then you become their best friend. Okay? So let's look at these seven big mistakes and I hope you can avoid these. So number one is don't worry about the tech, the technology. Don't worry about it. Okay? The more you worry about the technology, the less you focus on actually creating your content. And here's, here's something I want you to think about. The less you know about the tech, the better off you're gonna be. So if you can get somebody else, a web developer, somebody to set up your website or whatever, get somebody else to do that for you. The more you start to fiddle around in the HTML and all that other stuff, you're gonna go down a rabbit hole and then the day is gone and you're like, what did I do today? So if you can, find somebody else to do that. You can find these people on Elance or Upwork, you can find them on uh, all sorts of different outsourcing sites and you don't have to pay an arm and a leg to have somebody just kind of like manage or set up your website, okay? Uh, the other thing you may want to look at is again, if you're designing the website, there are some really cool services like PageCloud or Wix.com, uh, lead pages are examples, but those are not necessarily uh, somebody else doing them for you. That's kind of you spending the time building the website yourself. So if you have no other option and you have to do all the work yourself, then you may want to look at those options and maybe even just a simpler option is to use a simple WordPress theme and set up a WordPress blog like that. Okay. So don't worry about the tech focus on your gift, which is your content, which is your ideas. Okay. The second big mistake you want to avoid is don't go broad, go deep and narrow. Right? I went broad and it's very tough to compete in broad. So when you go broad, you're basically competing with like Dr. Oz. All right. So good luck. WebMD. Good luck. Uh, what you want to be doing is you want to be going deep and narrow and be the expert in a specific small segment of the wellness industry. That way it's a lot easier to stand out above the noise and become the trusted expert to that audience. Okay. So go narrow and deep. And it's a lot easier to get your articles and blog content ranking for smaller segments of an audience or smaller segments of this entire wellness space. You know, trying to rank for how to lose weight is a lot more challenging than, for instance, you know, how to, how to overcome adrenal fatigue or something along those lines, right? So you want to get like really specific and go deep on that topic area. And that, what that, what that's going to do as well from Google's perspective is Google will know that your website is about this topic. And if you can stay focused on that topic, you will become not only in the audience's eyes and the marketplace's eyes, but also in Google's eyes, the blog or the website on that specific topic. Okay. So that's important. Um, number three, the third big mistake you want to avoid is fuss, fussing over just putting out bland content. Okay. So what, what, I, what I mean by this is you want to focus on passion and your, your voice. Okay. You want to, you want to write what you're passionate about, but there also needs to be a, a need in the marketplace, right? I love airplanes and I, I could sit at the airport and watch airplanes take off and land all day. I would be like a pig in, you know what, but guess what? Uh, that's not the market that I'm in. There is actually a very rabid, rabid uh, market of uh, plane spotters, which is a different discussion. But if my passion is to write about airplanes, that's not really going to serve uh, my current health audience that much, right? So you want to find topics within your narrow, deep markets that you're passionate about writing about. And maybe it's just opinionated stuff, right? It can be, here's what I believe about this. Here's my stance on this. And that is going to translate beautifully 
into the reader because they're going to pick up on that and be like, yeah, I agree with this or no, I don't agree with that. And that's good, right? You want to polarize people. It's very important, but also make sure that there's a need for what you are passionate about writing about. Okay. So the fourth big mistake is fussing about being a great writer instead of actually developing your voice. So again, this relates back to what I just talked about is when you can communicate your passion and enthusiasm for something, and this is why I love video because it's very easy to do this, right? Uh, more so for me than writing. So instead of fussing about sentence structure and tone, whatever, focus on your voice, your insights, right? Focus on what's in here, the ideas, the opinions that you have and don't worry so much. People will forgive you if you make a spelling mistake. Although there is always one person who's like, you should really proofread your stuff. You missed an S here. I'm never going to follow you again. Beautiful. I don't even want to have you follow me again. You can actually polarize people just based on your spelling mistakes, which is actually something I might have to start doing because I don't, I make quite a few of them. Anyways, um, number five is to research and plan ahead of time. So the mistake here is not researching and planning ahead of time. It's kind of like, just like, I have an idea. I'm going to write about it. And you're simply writing when you're inspired. And that's what amateurs do. Pros get the work done based on a schedule. And what the schedule does is it gives you structure. And when you have structure, you have freedom. And when you have that, you have less overwhelm. And when you have less overwhelm, you don't feel like you have to write something. It's just part of the process. So research this, the topics that you want to write about. And when I say you want to write about, what I really mean is the topics your audience wants you to write about, which basically means ask them, what is your number one challenge with X? Okay, just get open it. Like if you've got a Facebook page or a Facebook group, ask them, what is your number one obstacle with this? Their answers turn into your contents. Okay, I have a, I have a tough time with this. Okay, that becomes your article. What you want to do with that is cross-reference that with a basic keyword planner uh, research thingamajig, which basically a, a Google keyword planner is a free keyword research tool that you can look at keyword phrases to look at which ones are super competitive, which one to stay away from, and which ones are less competitive, but still have a decent amount of search. And those are the ones you want to go after, the long tail keywords. So don't go after lose weight or weight loss. Go after how do I lose weight after giving birth? That's a long tail keyword. That's a very motivated person who's going to want a solution to that specific question. Okay, so do your research, ask your audience what their number one pain point obstacle challenge is, cross-reference that with a keyword phrase match in Google Keyword Planner that has low competition, relatively high search, and then plan your content accordingly. If you're publishing one post a week, just set up a simple spreadsheet. And if you've already downloaded my uh, free content calendar, then you can use that. If not, you can get it below this video. Uh, I'll include that as a free bonus for you. So you can download the content calendar, which is a Google or a, basically an Excel spreadsheet that will give you much more structure to streamlining and planning out your content ahead of time. So in our business, our content is mapped out for the next six to nine months. So that's done. I don't have to think about that, which is nice because I know exactly what's being published on December 21st, on March 3rd, on April 14th. Okay. And not that you have to like to that level, but if you're publishing once a month, just say, okay, January, I'm writing about this. February, I'm writing about this. And it's already planned out, done. You have a basic structure for what you're going to talk about. Done. Okay. So that is number five. The sixth biggest mistake that I see people make, and this is not just health and fitness, but this is all blogging in general, is focusing more on the creation side of the content as opposed to the promotion side. Like with anything, um, like promotion, marketing really makes the world go round. Okay. So let's be very honest. You have to have an amazing product. And in this case, the product is your content. Okay. The better your content is, the easier the promotion is. So I'm not saying write a 250 word article and then try to get backlinks and shares for that. Write an amazing be all and end all piece of content that people naturally are like, Oh my God, this is unbelievable. I'm going to share this on Twitter, Facebook, everywhere else. And that's part of the promotion, right? That's, that's a passive promotion though. So what you want to do is you want to focus on, okay, here's this amazing asset. You want to reach out to other blogs. You want to reach out to other influencers and be like, listen, you know, we just created this. I would love to have it featured somewhere. Or you could be a guest on a podcast and link 
from that podcast back to that piece of content. And what they would do is they would include that link in the show's notes on their website. And that's a backlink that Google is going to see as valuable back to that specific piece of content. So the promotion is massively important. There's lots of ways to promote. Uh, we don't have to get into them here, but things like basic social sharing, like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, if you're more in the business space, Pinterest is absolutely phenomenal if you've got some beautiful images. Uh, and then obviously a lot of manual outreach. Okay, you're gonna have to start developing relationships with other bloggers, other influencers, and you may even want to develop your own syndicate so you can start to share each other's content and link to it and develop some more backlinks and, and, and goodwill and, and love that way. So the promotion is very, very important. It's a little bit tedious. You can have somebody else do that for you. It's like a virtual assistant, if you will. They can do all the outreach and, and so forth, okay? The seventh big mistake you want to avoid is please get this off your website. I never want to see this again. Sign up for my newsletter. Bing. Nobody cares about that. Nobody cares about your newsletter. Take it off the website if it's there. Nobody wants to join your newsletter. Nobody wants to be part of your monthly whatever. All they want is a solution to their problem. So, as an example, I gave you a call to action, which was to click the link on this video or below to download your free content calendar template. That's not sign up for my newsletter. When you do so, I'll send you a weekly email to give you some more amazing tips and strategies to build your online business. But I'm leading with, you've got a problem in the sense of lack of structure, lack of planning. You don't know how to kind of, you know, do all that stuff. And that's not your fault. It's just, you have maybe you thought about it. And now I'm giving you a specific solution to that problem. So on your website, at the very minimum, if you just have one call to action, discover the biggest pain points in your marketplace. Remember that, that question I said, you know, ask your audience what's your you know, number one challenge. If you see a consistent answer to that, maybe that the solution to that becomes your main opt-in, lead magnet, free bribe, whatever you want to call it, on your website. The sign-up for my newsletter days are way behind us, so please do not include that on your website. Okay, nobody cares about that. So there we have it. That's how to start a health and fitness blog. Uh, seven big mistakes to avoid, really. And again, there's a lot of nuances, right? There's a lot of little nitty-gritty things that, for the sake of this video, we don't have the time to get into but I've also created a number of other videos in relation to this content marketing area that I think you'll find super valuable as well. So check the channel, right? So first of all, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Plus go through the archives of the Healthpreneur playlist and you'll see all the other content marketing videos that I've created. They'll be super, super helpful for you. And remember to download your free content calendar template at the link below this video. It, it will really, it's a simple, simple tool, but it'll really, really help you out and uh, give you a bit more freedom and less overwhelm. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm Uriel Kame from healthpreneurgroup.com and I look forward to seeing you in our next video.